Hi everyone, my name is Sava. I joined Google about four years ago looking for the highest impact project I could find and had the privilege of starting Google's flood forecasting initiative. I want to start with a real world example of how floods can affect people's lives. What you're seeing is the Nawa village in Bihar, India. We had the opportunity of visiting this village only two days after the video you're seeing right now. There was no warning for this flooding event. And while this video was taken during the day, floodwaters originally began to rise at night while people were sleeping. When people woke up, for some of them, it was already too late. Tragically, two people died that night. And as terrible as this case is, it could have been much worse. While we were there, we had the honor of meeting Rakesh, a young man who was one of the only people who knew how to swim in the village. Rakesh spent hours swimming through raging floodwaters, carrying dozens of people to safety. Were it not for him, the death toll would have been much higher. Now there are many things that only people who are there on the ground, like Rakesh, can do. Some things you just can't do from afar. But there are some things that you can. And that's why we started the Google Flood Forecasting Initiative. We believe that everyone has the right to have the information that they need to make sure that they and their loved ones are safe at times of flooding. And to try and achieve that goal, we do three main things. And over the next few minutes, I want to walk you through briefly each one of these components. The first component is what's called a hydrologic model. These models take as inputs things like precipitation and temperature and produce a forecast of what will happen in the river a few hours or even days into the future. Now, over the last 50 years, the way these models are implemented is using some conceptual representation of the different physical processes in the hydrologic cycle. But ever since 1970, progress in making these models more accurate has been incremental. That's why we've taken a radically different approach. We use a network of neural networks to fully represent the riverine system. Our models can directly learn the physical processes they're observing, and as a result, can represent them more accurately than human-made models. The second component is what's called the inundation model. This model simulates the behavior of the water as it moves across the floodplain. This allows us to know what areas are going to be affected, and be able to tell people not just things like the Ganges is going to rise by one meter, but tell them what villages and what neighborhoods are going to be affected and how high we expect water to be in their specific area. Now, these models are usually implemented through solvers for differential equations. So again, a purely physics-based model. In this case, we've taken a hybrid approach. We've been able to show that if we can separate the components of this model into, on the one hand, several processes where we truly understand the physics and can represent it well. And on the other hand, components where we don't have a good representation of the physics or we don't have enough information to initialize that representation, which can really benefit from data-driven machine learning modeling. We can then combine these two types of modeling in a single model and produce results that are both more accurate and more scalable. And through combining these two models, we've been able to achieve unprecedented accuracy, which allows us to provide forecasts that are more accurate and more actionable. This means that when people look at our alerts, we can tell them accurately and reliably what's going to happen around them. But of course, all this matters only if we can make sure that the right information reaches the right people. We have several strategies for doing so. First, we rely on Google's public alerts infrastructure that you just heard about from Mo to make sure that this information reaches millions of people within minutes of when an alert is generated. Additionally, we collaborate with disaster management agencies, international organizations, and the Red Cross to make sure that even people who don't have access to Google products or even the internet can receive this critical information in real time. In 2020, our operational flood forecasting systems covered more than 200 million people. And we're working hard to scale these up globally as quickly as we can. To conclude, we want to use all three of these components to make sure that everyone has the information that they need to stay safe and informed, no matter who they are or where they are. Thank you for listening.